shot away. Oh. It's just another super goal. Back everybody pitch side. England have won this one 22 points to six. There's a little bit of an arm wrestle at the start, but England ran away with it in the end. Good evening and welcome to Broad Street Rugby Club in the heart of the country from Coventry for perhaps the biggest English schoolboy rugby game of the decade. Sedbert taking on Wellington College, part of the Daily Mail trophy. I'm Scott Eburn and I'll be taking you through tonight's proceeding. I'm joined by 15 Rugby's Angus Savage. Angus, thanks for coming on, Cons. It's good to be here. Can't wait for this one. It's, uh, it's been quite the build-up. Looking forward to it. It's... Uh, Last nine occasions, Sedbur have won six. It's going to be a huge game and will really set up either side for a huge uh, rest of the season. Who do you think is going to take it? Time and time again, they're, they're, they're decided by absolutely nothing. You know, Last year we had a touchline conversion to win it. I think we're looking at something similarly close this year. I've had the privilege of seeing both in action in the last week or so. and. Um, there is absolutely no doubt that these are two of the best best teams in the country, probably the two best teams in the country. It could go either way. It will be it will be tight either way. Wellington, they've played a few more games than Sedba this season. They also picked up the title at St. Joe's as well. How much do you think that plays into things? Because they're a little bit more robust having just played a few more games. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting on that front. Uh, Wellington, are, they're a big physical side and, and they like to get on the front foot through their forwards in the tight. So those extra games have given them the battle hardness, but it might well also have just tied them out a bit more. You know, they've had a really busy schedule. Uh, Sebbers has been a little bit less busy um, and they, they buy a hair. But let's be honest. The, when it comes to this, it's a game of adrenaline more than anything else. They're, they're going to be so pumped up. I think uh, any tiredness and any any differential in the games, it's not going to matter too much. Well, both schools have been playing all afternoon from around about one o'clock. It's uh, a real rugby festival between these two schools at Broad Street. Every year, every November, they come together here in the heart of the country, north v south. And we saw Wellington at St. Joe's earlier this year. Here's some of the highlights from them. This. Uh, well, we saw them take victory in the final against uh, Kirkson Grammar and this man, Ben Murray. What a performance he had on, on that weekend back in October. You know, it's typical of what we were what we were saying before about the, the power around the short side from their from their forwards. He he typified it throughout the St Joseph's Festival and um, yeah, you look you look there, you've got um, Matt Keast alongside him and guys like that. Just tremendous power off the bench as well. It's, formidable unit they have up front and it just goes to show because they've got those two starting on the bench for today so it just goes to show the amount of power that they're perhaps looking to bring off the bench in the in the second half and the, um, the game rule has been has been adopted across the country this year so you know, every player match their squad has to get half game so you don't see this from a lot of schools of well let's, let's get some some real units on the bench some 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 top top players because actually we know they're getting half a game anyway and we might as well bring them on to make an impact. You see the celebrations at the end of the St Joe's Festival this year at 1915 victory. Huge performance from them. They're 18 from 18 this season, including the seven games that they played at St Joe's. Sedbert picked up eight from eight. Interestingly enough, their uh, points for, they would average 42 points a game so far from Sedba and showing their real attacking spirit that they've got. 
Yeah, and I was at the uh, last week, and what was really noticeable is their their kick return. There, there are some flyers out there. Mel, Ollie Melville at fullback is uh, is definitely one to watch. Um, but that's where a lot of that try scoring comes from is is real clinical play. They're quite happy to sit back, let you have the ball, and then just pounce. And when they do that, it's you know three or four seconds from 22 to 22 and game over. Well, earlier on, we had a chat with both coaches, Dan Richards from Wellington and Simon Mulholland from Sedba, and here's what they have to say. Simon Mulholland, director of rugby at Sedba, a uh, big game for you guys today, uh, trying to make it five from five. How do you think it's going to go? Yeah, good question. Uh, it'll be tough. It'll be tough. Um, look, we've got a lot of respect for Wellington, um, especially their first team. They've been very dominant this year, and, and we'll have to be at our best uh, to compete with them. And uh, looking ahead to the game, is there any way you're looking to particularly play? It's a bit bit wet out there. It's been raining a lot in Coventry over the last few weeks. So is that going to play into the, play into the fixture? Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know these these fixtures have always been so close. So the, the small margins, um, you've got to get them right. And um, Look, I think Wellington's so physical, we'll have to defend well today and um, I guess probably the team that does the basics might, might get, a, get up today. And winning this game, obviously you're looking to get a treble treble in, in three seasons. Does this go a long way to securing that for you for this season? It does, it does. We, look, we don't think too much about that. With our fixture list and the strength of it, if we look uh, more than a week ahead, we're going to slip up. So, look, our main focus is Wellington at the moment. That's what we can control. Uh, we'll think about the rest of that once we get through tonight. But what, what a challenge and what an occasion to be here for the boys. It's just outstanding. So. Obviously, you've got quite a few teams here playing today. It's a big occasion, said by Wellington. So, uh, talk, talk us through some of the other games that have been going on. Yeah, amazing. Uh, under 14s, I think we lost by, by 12 0 in a great game. Um, I think the under 15s was close. The under 16s is close. And the second team game look, look, looks pretty close as well. So, I mean, what a block fixture. Um, you know, we have great games every year with these guys. Broad Street's a great venue. We love coming here. Uh, we get well looked after, and the, the games are just outstanding. So, what a pleasure to be here, and what an advertisement for schoolboy rugby. So it's the biggest day in schoolboy rugby for 2019-2020. All the best today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Dan Richards, director of rugby at Wellington. Big game for you today. Do you reckon you're going to kick off with a win? I think it's going to be a hell of an ask of the boys. Uh, probably two of the better sides in, in the country uh, this year going at each other tonight. Boys are really excited. Both schools are really excited. I think it'll be tight. Uh, and it'll be about who manages, manages the conditions the best probably. So what's been the secret to your success this season? We saw you take victory at St. Joe's. You're on for an unprecedented treble for this season. So what is what is in the magic this year? Uh, I bang on about this a bit. I think it's probably how tight this group are. Um, they're genuinely good friends. You know, they're, they're away from it. They've come through a lot together. They've been really good mates. They were 13. Uh, they've been on a great journey through cup runs, and and that pushed them on to work hard. And you know, when it, when you have to dig in. They kind of look to their right, look to their left, and they see when they're best mates. I think you just find that extra bit of energy. Here, 12 months ago, you lost out to a conversion in the last minute. These games come agonisingly close. There's only a score in it every time you meet. So do you think it's going to be a tight one again? I think without doubt. I think you look on, on paper, games aren't played there, but you, you look on paper, it looks like a one-score game. Uh, they're packed with talent, they're packed with quality. We know how hard they work, we know the quality they'll bring. Uh, we also think we've got some quality uh, and we think we can and we think we can go and do it. We've just know we've got to execute today. And what about this occasion as a whole? Because you've got lots of teams here, lots of players coming for a whole day out. You meet at a neutral venue. How special is that for, for your whole whole uh, cohort and teams coming here today? This is probably the biggest day in, in our calendar. Um, it's really special, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the boys all look forward to it, they target it, they look for it, um, they talk about it for, for weeks in advance. You know, no one wants to pick up a knock from a few weeks before, before said the day, before they get that chance to, to run out against, against that, you know, wearing our famous shirt against their famous shirt. And yeah, it's just really, really special and you know, it'll continue for a long time, hopefully. Dan, all the best today, good luck to you and the boys. Thanks very much, appreciate it. Well, both coaches really acknowledging the tough tasks they've got in front of them. You may have heard some cheering in the background because Sedba have taken to the pitch. You can see them in their distinctive brown kits. Currently in the huddle on the pitch. And uh, here come the boys from Wellington College. Dan Richards, their head of rugby politics teacher at the college for the last year or so and uh, really reignited this side 
So Angus, who are the key players for both Wellington and Sedbury to sort of watch out for? We've said that uh, Ben Murren and Matt Keister are on the bench, but what about in their starting 15 for Wellington? Well, I'm really excited about the uh, the lineup between the two fullbacks, Ollie Melville and Hector Elrington. Uh, we mentioned Melville before the uh, England under-18 international, really really threatening counter-attacker, but we saw from Elrington uh, last week in the Champions Trophy semi-final, he's a brilliant counter-attacker as well. Two fly halves, both really impressive as well. Both like to take the ball to the line, Louis Johnson and Monty Bradbury. Um, but the, the two skippers is where I'm really interested to see. The two tight head props, JJ Coadio and Finn Baxter. A couple of cracking players there and that'll be really exciting to see up front because we know these are two big, powerful packs. Well, a few uh, big names on there in the second row for said, but Carwin Tupolotu, part of the Scarlets Academy in Wales, under 18, his dad. Was number eight for Tonga with 16 international caps, went to the World Cup in 1999, came through the uh, Exiles pathway. Also, you got there a recognisable surname, Murray Redpath, brother Cam, captain this said, but first 15. Good heritage in that family. Wellington then, Finn Baxter at captain. Huge game needed for him. They've got power on the bench. Really dynamic back row as well for Wellington College. Keep an eye on Finn Tours on the bench as well. He's a he's a really really young back three player, part of the under 15 Cup winning side last year, and he's uh, he's straight into the first team squad. He's a really exciting talent to keep an eye on. Well, it's Sedbas, Diego Warren can getting things underway. Wellington opting to clear it into space. Good nudge downfield earlier on. Here comes Sedba. Already trying to chop some tackles. It's Marcus Rhodes at number eight for Wellington. You get a sense of the intensity already, can you? All players on the pitch and supporters on the sideline, vocal inside the opening 60 seconds here. That was a really big statement from Rhodes as well. We spoke about Melville's counter-attacking and how important that would be, and to chop him down nice and early with a big hit is it's a real sign of intent there from Wellington. Cassius Cleves. With a little break on the counter for Wellington. Sedba with the penalty. Holding on, well, sloppy from Wellington. That's brilliant from Bailey, straight over the ball. Barely a second there to go over it. Showing his experience, the vice captain, who was here. He was one of the key players last year as well, part of the all said but back row that are coming back for their second bite of this game. Fantastic bit of work on the deck from him. Well, first chance to see what Lawrence Mason can do at hooker from the line out he started this game 12 months ago where they came out 17 points to 15 victors on a similar sort of night here at Broad Street temperature not as cold as it has been in recent weeks but it's a bit boggy underfoot we saw the second 15 game which ended just before this one and it was a last minute conversion as well which won it for Sedbo, lovely break, lovely line in the midfield from Tom Lanny. Down the far touchline now, good footwork off the right wing. From Cameron Melville. Here comes Tua Pilotu. Johnson. Well, that's gone forward. You can see what Sebra are trying to do there, though. They're trying to get the big forwards onto the game line as fast as possible and then see if they can look for some space out the back later on. Just got that one a little bit awry, but it's good intent. A bit needless from Sebra as well. They weren't really under pressure. Look how deep Johnson was as well. See the Wellington defence, though. They had three men lining up for that tackle. They're just so organised in defence. It's a real key feat feature of their game against Epsom College where they, they just flooded their defensive line with numbers. It's unbelievably impressive for what is a schoolboy side to have that sort of discipline in defence. 
paid dividends for them last month in the St. Joe's National Hold Schools nine. Rugby Festival. First chance at the scrum. Good platform. Who's gone? Who's gone? Livingston Learman trying to set his back to life. Good rush defence from Lanny, though. The outside centre for Sedba. Back across traffic and the pass out the door. Johnson trying to feed all down the 15 metre channel. Tackle coming in this time from John Bailey, the vice captain for Sedba. Nick and Wellington. Kane goes on his own, just about stays in field. Rhodes doesn't really get any metres. Looks like that's a good turnover. No, no, no. Knock on by five. Eleven was on Knocked his feet. On. By Sedba though. Knock on by five. So we we'll scrum down to Wellington on halfway, five metres in from the far touch line. It's already becoming a bit of a key feature when Wellington are on the attack though. Sedba's work on the deck. That's one penalty, one that was close there to getting the turnover. It could have been done for off his feet as well, I suppose, but it, they're a real threat at this breakdown, it looks like early on. Well, a good attacking platform here on halfway, plenty of open Boys. areas of the pitch for Set. Wellington to exploit. They've got some good backs and we already spoke about Cassius Cleves, Alex Teague and Hector Elrington, the back three. I think a bit of rain is starting to fall in Coventry. It's a bit of a sticky pitch. It doesn't necessarily look like it down on the touchline, but from where we're sat, you can really see a few boggy Keep patches. Your, uh, your sure that's going to play into the game as the minutes wear on. So what about the battle at scrum half then? Both uh, you know, Rip Ath and Ben Livingston Crunch. come through the ranks of uh, schools, but uh, Ray Rip Ath got a good family history. Yeah, two very good players, two Scottish qualified players, but uh, obviously, uh, as we know through the family uh, family history, also both English qualified. That'll be a real, really good battle, I think. Two exciting players, two traditional looking scrum halves as well. Elrington, great break from him. Manages to feed Alex T. <laughs> Holding on though, they didn't have enough support. They almost came too wide, didn't they, Wellington? And a great, great counter ruck from Sedba. And it looks as if that may have been Murray Redpath cleaning up the dirty work. Well, we've spoken about it already, but the breakdown looks like a key area already. We've we've had maybe only half a dozen of them, and in, in three of them, there's been two penalties and one that one that could have been if uh, if, if things had gone slightly differently. There's uh, there's some work to do there from, from Wellington's point of view in terms of getting numbers there and getting the clean out early. For said, but that's just brilliant work on the floor, as you say. I think that's Murray Redpath that's made the sweep and cover. Well, perhaps the, no, no, uh, I take that back. Yeah, uh, looks as if Melville actually came in from the side initially. Yeah, I think so. That might might have been a bit of brotherly work on the floor there. Two of them helping each other out, but that just shows you from from one to fifteen they're prepared to compete on the floor. Absolutely brilliant work there. Lawrence Johnson with the line out, great accuracy, leaping pass from Redpath. Well, here comes Diego Walken, represented Chile at the South American Under-18 Sevens tournament last year. Sedba sent that one long. Dropped backwards by Alrington, but good hitch kick. Managed to clean that one up well. Fortunately for him, went backwards this time. Carry coming in from Teague. Ted Johnson, oh, a lovely offload, great pick up by Sanger as well. Thank you, Josh. Alex Teague stepping back in field. Wellington starting to get a few more bodies in at the breakdown to secure the ball. Options out the back. There goes Max Thomas. Reese Tate trying to put in a big hit, doesn't quite manage to grapple the man, chip over the top from Bradbury. Bounce into some space collected by Melville. No 
Well, they had the advantage, so the referee's going to bring this one back. That's what that Wellington sort of fringe attack can do, though. It, it gets you to creep offside because they're just coming in waves around that corner. And with big ball carriers, you want to get off, you want to make your tackles. Said but guilty there of just being too enthusiastic to, to try and make sure they get them down early and just jumping offside. We've got good continuity in attack, Wellington, using the big boys, then the decoy runner starting to work their way into the 15-metre channel. When they've had the ball in the first 10 minutes of this game, they've certainly managed to move the ball wide and go through the phases. Yeah, and what's really worth keeping an eye on is, is Monty Bradbury at 10. He likes to try and engage the defence and try to get really close up tight to them. Sometimes that means that he ends up taking it on himself, but what it does is it means people aren't quite sure what option is coming. Is it going to be a forward short? Is he going to go out the back wide? Is he going to take something on his own? It's, it's a bit of a puzzler for the defence at times. Still only 16, Monty Bradbury. Good line-out ball from Wellington. They love a driving mall. But if there's anybody that can stop them, it's got to be said, but... Livingston Learman told to use it as Wellington finally go to ground. for a carrier, finds Marcus Rhodes. Well, Sedbur have done fabulously to steal that one. To Ipilotu into contact, but he's shunted backwards by two black and yellow shirts. Takes something to, to knock him backwards. That was, that was a real statement there from the Wellington forwards. Well, I read somewhere that Carwin Tupilotu is Six foot four and 115 kilos. So to send him backwards, you've got to be strong and powerful. He is a big unit. He's a talented unit. Star for Wales under 18. Player to look out for. Sedba with the scrum on their own 22. Murray Redpath trying to follow in his brother's footsteps in. Winning this game here. Much better hit in the scrum from Wellington this time. Looks like a bit of sledging between the two front rows there as well. Fair few in there that know each other well. The couple that played in last year's fixture, so I'm sure, sure there'll be plenty going on up there. Always is in the front row. As I was walking into Broad Street today, I heard a, a few of the... Uh, Wellington forwards talking about how this is their best and most favoured fixture of the year. So I think uh, they're certainly up for this one today. Something tells me that might be reciprocated. These two love this fixture. And to be honest, everyone in the school's rugby world does. This is this is the fixture. Redpath does well to get it away to Johnson. Johnson chopped by Rhodes. Wellington starting to get a bit more active at the breakdown defensively. Sedba trying to come wide, managing to bounce off a tackle. Here comes their hooker, Mason. Mason probably doesn't often find himself down the five metre channel. Fortunately, bundled into touch. So Wellington will have the line out in front of the stand here at Broad Street. Classic little bit of. Uh, Backs getting involved in a ruck there from Monty Bradbury just to shift a leg into touch. No point doing any of that rucking stuff when you can do something nice and cheeky to get it over and done with. Simple but effective. Well, I said, but they're looking for the treble treble, taking the Daily Mail trophy, the Roslyn Park Sevens and the Sedba Tens in the last two seasons. You said they've looked good all year, but what are their chances? That would be so unprecedented to win a treble treble. How difficult is that to achieve for them this year? Oh, it's it's immensely difficult, but it was immensely difficult to do it once. It was immensely difficult to do it twice. They, they're a remarkable side. I think I said last year when they completed what was then a double-double that it was it was ranked with the greatest of schoolboy rugby achievements. Um, yeah, it's, it's unspeakably hard, but... I don't put anything past this lot anymore. They're, they're just fantastic. Well, a bit of an error at the line out from Wellington. Well, pounced upon by the boys in brown. So we'll have a, another scrum, but talking about 
unprecedented trebles. Wellington, if they come away with victory today, they could well be in with a chance of securing their own. Yeah, well, the uh, the maths, is, as I've had a go at it, tells me that to, to guarantee themselves the, the Daily Mail trophy, they need six match day points, or you know, a bonus point win and a, and a losing bonus point, or any combination that would get them to that. Um, so a win here would take them to within the brink, and, and of course that assumes that, that Cranley and Sedbra are perfect in their other games. So the reality is a win here, and it's all but Wellington's. Bit of a loose pass from Diego Warnken inside centre, but it was picked up nicely by Oliver Melville, the fullback. And we've seen his quick footwork, but Sedba penalised at the breakdown for being offside. I don't think they'll be too disappointed with that as a, as a penalty because because they've had such success at the breakdown, it's worth just testing the limits of what, what the referee's happy with, what he's not. Now they know you can't do that. They know where the balance is. They know that they've got the upper hand overall. It's not the worst penalty in the world to give away, although they want to make sure that this line-out doesn't cost them. A bit scrappy from both sides. The chance for Wellington to try and get something from inside the 22 here. Still scoreless inside the first 15 minutes. Some big units gathered gathered around Monty Bradbury in the ten channel there. I, I rather fancy this is coming off the top and they're sending a big runner in hard into the ten channel. If you were a 16 year old fly half playing against boys two years older than you, you would certainly want the Wellington back row on your shoulder. I'd be asking my fly half, if I, if I, my full back rather, if I could nip into, into fly half of the defence. Here comes the captain, Finn Baxter leading from the front in these early exchanges. Wellington trying to show the dynamism which has made them go unbeaten this season. Change of direction once again from Livingston Learman. Trying to twist and weave their way through this set of the defence. Off the base of the ruck once more. Keeping it tight with the forwards at the moment. Referee saying no dummy off the base of the ruck. Wellington, the backs at the moment, drifting wide. Really good tackle coming in from Tua Pelotti there. Brilliant there from Tua Pelotti. Here come Wellington, getting ever closer. Trying to find some space. Bradbury leaps up, thinks he's got it. Do you know, I think that's absolutely brilliant again from Tua Pelotu on the floor. I think that's twice in, in two phases there that he's he's completely wrapped up the man and just soaked all chance of the ball getting across the line. The referee just going to his assistant. Could not see the grounding, so he said it's been held up. That's outstanding defence. It's so difficult to explain how hard that is to do, to, to wrap someone up when you're coming from a higher body angle than them and not let them get to ground. It's just absolutely brilliant there, just using all of his weight and his muscle. Particularly when you've got no momentum as well. They're standing flat-footed, oncoming onslaught from the Wellington forwards. And we've spoken about how big that forward pack is. You know, These are not small guys running at them. That's, that's really, really good work. It's one of the things that makes Wellington so good is their dynamism and their, their power that they have. Any any other side in the country probably wouldn't be able to deal with that. No, I mean, we've, we've seen through the results that those situations they are used to scoring from. Kane took it flat but was shunted backwards by Warnken, the inside centre from Sedba. Slow ball off the breakdown, popped back inside. Tries to get some momentum with a forward this time. Wellington just managing to gain a few inches. Penalty to Sedba. Not releasing. 
That's the skipper on the deck there. And again, that's just brilliant work at the breakdown from Sedba. That's what three breakdown penalties they've had. It's a crucial one there. That's that was an absolutely pivotal moment to come away without conceding, getting the penalty. Refs absolutely on side with their breakdown work. That was perfect timing, brilliant bit of play. Well, just gone into the second quarter of this game, you really feel that Sedbur have got on the right side of the referee at the breakdown, and that's perhaps going to be pivotal if they want to come away with a victory today. Look how quick he is to just see that chance. We're, the ball goes down, he just pops over it within a split second, and that's all he has there, really. Yeah, one arm in there, just causing a fuss. Shows the strength of the man, that he's got one arm in there, body's flying around, and he's still able to sustain his feet. But despite Sedba's strength at the breakdown, they've struggled to really get into the Wellington 22. Yeah, it's a strange one. It's almost as if they're they're playing into a stiff breeze. There is a little bit of a wind, but but nothing nothing too serious. They just don't seem to be able to get any phases together. I think though they'll be reasonably happy. They've been under a reasonable bit of pressure there. They've come away without conceding. They'll probably trust themselves that. Yeah, particularly when you look at the history of this fixture, if it stays close, they'll be thinking, well, we, we might be able to just nick it. Today's stream supported by Mounted Memories for all your mounted memorabilia framings. Wellington trying to go around the back, but it's... Uh, been broken up by Tom Lanny in the centres for Sedmer. Bounce forward of Johnson and Tupelotu gets a hold of it. Here comes a rampaging run from him. Difficult to get down. He's a bit like Billy Villapola in a sense, the way he just brushes off tackles. Yeah, unbelievably carrying it. You know, he almost he comes across with such power that he almost doesn't require clearing out because he's just got defenders flying. You see the knock on there just off the uh, left shoulder of Ted Johnson. Crouch. Keeping their discipline well there, though. Look at that scrum from Wellington. Picked up off the base from Marcus Rhodes. He's gone backwards. Managed to secure the ball against the head. Superb scrummaging from Wellington. Max Thomas just uh, stepping back in field, gets to his feet, goes again. Well supported this time. Sedburn up getting sucked into the breakdown this time. Wellington at the moment trying to find every inch they can and that's been lost this time by Rhodes. Knocked on. Watching that play develop though, I think if Wellington can manage to get just a few phases in tight, there is space out wide. Sedbur is set really tight to try and deal with that threat from the from the fringes with the big men. If Wellington can just get them going backwards a couple of steps, get the ball wide, I think there is space for them. Cagey game so far. And from the last nine times these two sides have met. Said but have come out on top six. There's one draw and Wellington have won two. The last coming in 2013. This stream supported by Guardian Pro Mouthguards, giving your teeth every sporting chance. Always important to have a good mouth guard. Amazing how many players I speak to who say they don't wear them. I can't work it out. I, why would you not? I feel quite, quite, almost naked without one whenever I play. Not that that's that often any, anymore. But. It seems very strange not to have one. You only get one set of teeth. Well, it's uh, going to be a tough task for Wellington to try and beat the fifth consecutive win for Sedba today if they come out on top. They last win in November 2013. 
was only a four point difference, 14 points to 10, the victory on that occasion. Looks as though Finn Baxter has come off. I'm not sure if that's permanent or if that's uh, just a part of the half game rule and they want to make sure they can have him on later on in this game given how tight it is. It's not as if they've got bad replacements in the front row, Ben Murray and Matt Keast. It looks like it's Murren that's come on, I think, in the 17 shirt there. Red Pan. With the uh, putting in the scrum. Said they've got some work to do to try and get out of their half here. Well pounced upon by Johnson. Wellington back with the ball. Finley Lock with the carry. Straightening up in the midfield from Rhodes once again. Said but trying to hold it up. And it's Freeman doing a great job for Said but. And every time Wellington get the ball, they seem to come unstuck. Yeah, and it's the, it's the tail of the game, really, isn't it? It's Wellington have dominated possession, but they can't, they can't manage to get more than sort of two or three phases together before you see, uh, you see Seba doing some fantastic work at the breakdown. It, it's, it's really defining the game, just as I noticed that Finn Baxter is, is back on the field. Probably the uh, shortest period of play Ben Murray has ever experienced. Front row forwards, they're quite happy with that. One, one quick hit out, go, go and rest for a bit, come back out again. Wellington once again, huge scrub. They're just beginning to get on top in this game. The set piece really pivotal for them at the moment. We've spoken a lot about Finn Baxter, the captain. He's also the uh, England under-18 captain in South Africa this year. Part of the Queen's Academy. He's an amazing player. He, uh, he's got, he's got a, a baby face and he looks like a sort of uh, friendly, cuddly chap, but he's a friendly, he's a friendly guy off the field, but on the field he's, he's as ruthless a prop forward as there is. It, some of his carrying is just brutally destructive. Well picked off the base by Riggs Tate this time. Redpath going on his own, brushes off one tackle. Brought down by Rhodes, great cover from the Wellington number eight. Charge from Tuvalotu once again. Rush defence coming from Johnson, left them a bit exposed here. Guns, Diego Walkin, the Chile under 18 international. Tries to get the offload away, but it goes forward. And he played the advantage, nothing coming, so Wellington will have the scrub. What a break from Diego Wonkin. That's really the first sighting we've had of the Sebba backs, getting a bit, of, a bit of free space, and it's, it's all come from the sheer depth they put on that ball, enticing Wellington to come out and jump, and he's just shown two quick steps inside. If you look at rather Monty Bradbury, yeah, he just shoots out the line, doesn't he? He's, you know, he's he's six inches away from a brilliant decision there. But Diego Wonkin just spots the gap, steps in. Brilliant play from him. If, if that Lovely ball, bit of covering there from Ellington. If that ball had just been passed a little bit earlier, Oliver Melville, the vice-captain, surely under the post. Oh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've spoken of his speed. If he gets that ball, he's there's no one catching him. But that's just an early sign of the danger that, that Sebba have when they when they get even a half a chance. It's been all Wellington so far, just on the front foot, grinding away. And we know that when they go wide, they've got that danger as well. But first sighting of, well, of what Sebba can do when they get a bit of front football. Bit of pace, bit of depth. And look how deep he was though. 20, 20 metres or so behind the breakdown. Yeah, well, both passes were sort of 10, 12 yards backwards, but it, it's all to try and entice that man to come out of the defensive line and create some sort of gap that you can you can have a go at. And it's, it's worked to perfection. They're just one offload away from, from a glorious try. Well, that is the first team pitch here at Broad Street. Of course, temporary home 
temporary training ground home for, for the Wasps. They've been based here for a good few years now with their temporary cabin, uh, cabins by the side of the clubhouse and main stand here. Plays a number of schools fixtures locally and nationally throughout the year. The Wellington at the moment seem to be having back-to-back -back fixtures because next week they're heading to the uh, Champions Trophy final as well against rugby school. Yeah, and that's well, I mean, one, uh, yet another one of the biggest schools games of the season. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be a huge game, two sides that have, uh, have proved absolutely fantastic so far this season. Wellington looking for for back-to-back -back titles, be the first side ever to, um, to to win that trophy. Not just back-to-back, -back, but actually just the first side to win it twice. Um, and they've they've got a fantastic chance. But but rugby school are, are, are a serious side. We saw in their semi-final their determination to to get the job done, scoring in the last play of the game to win it. I'm sure, rugby will be uh, watching this game, hoping that perhaps. Uh, Wellington come away a little bit more fatigued for next week's final. Yeah, and they'll be, you know, they'll be using this as an opportunity to see what they're what they're going to be facing. Get a bit of analysis in. It's unusual at schoolboy level to be able to to get a bit of analysis in on your opponents. So they'll be they'll be pretty joyous of the chance of having them on the screen twice in two weeks. Well, the Melville brothers linking up for Sedba. Just set up a bit of a counter. Here comes the captain, JJ Coidio. Freeman. Pitch kick coming in from the replacement back row. Flat pass. Well tackled though by Baxter. Melville really trying to play it out the back. Doesn't find the hands of Fraser Jones. It's a nice idea that because if he does get it away, they're, they're flying down the touchline, but it's maybe just a bit impatient given the nature of this game where that's really the first string of phases that Sebra have managed to, to get together. It may have been better to keep it in hand and keep going. I think he perhaps watched a bit of uh, Dan Bigger at the weekend with Northampton. <laughs> he may well have done. Certainly has reminiscence of that, doesn't it? What a hit that was, by the way, from Finn Baxter in the midfield. <laughs> Just absolutely flattening his man. Colossal collisions at the moment from both sides. And I think it may be Monty Bradbury that slipped off the pitch. I think we've got a replacement on a fly half. I saw him limp off. And just wait to count the numbers on the shirts get confirmation of that. If he is off, I wouldn't be surprised to see Max Thomas slide across from 12 to 10. He did that against Epson when they replaced Bradbury in the second half and had a fairly accomplished game. He certainly proved himself in depth off the tee, but looks as though Bradbury's still on. Just while we got a man at the front. Yo, boys! Who's all you here, all you? Well, it's Lucas Brook. With the line out throat. Played at flanker in the Champions Trophy final last year. Trying to set up. Stay straight, stay straight. Trying more once again. Penalty advantage. You have advantage, nine. Crossfield kick no, from front. Bradbury. Yeah. Referee was playing 18. the advantage. Wow, look at front. that hit coming in from Cameron Melville after the whistle. 18. He got the timing on that just right. The, the referee would feel harsh and pinging him for it, but he certainly knew what he was up to there. Fair play, leaving a mark on his man. Bit of a statement. Yeah, I think uh, the Wellington wing there, I'm not sure if it was Cleves or Teague, but uh, absolutely battered, slapped down like a salmon. Yeah, that was, that was a real statement of intent. That's... Uh, Unusual to see that from a winger. That's the sort of uh, the sort of time you expect from an experienced flanker. Absolute smackdown, wasn't it? Something out the uh, wrestling ring. More so than a rugby field. Big, big line out this for Wellington. They they've had the, the bulk of the ball in this game, and if they can, they really need to use this sort of opportunity to get themselves some points. You've seen their might. 
driving more. Great take from Finley Lock. It's at the back with Lucas Brook once again. The driving more. Something from the ages from Wellington that it's been well stopped by Sedbra. And I think perhaps John Bailey, the Sedbra vice captain, has pounced on that, stolen it on their own five metre line. Red Path lining up the kick. And collected nicely by Harry Shield. Replacement back to Sedbra. Bundled into touch just as he caught it. Awesome work again from Sebra on the floor. They, they deal with them all brilliantly. They, it looks as though it's getting momentum and it's going to fly forward. They manage to stop that. And then Bailey on the deck, just brilliant, just spots the ball and like any good flanker, he's on it in a split second. Crucial work for his team there. Sebra's guards at the breakdown are marshalling like military men, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're just they're completely on it. They're aware of everything that's going on. They're aware of what the boundaries of the laws are. They're, they're having an absolute blinder on the floor. You know, coming into this game, I didn't think that would be the key as Redpath goes, but it really is proving so far the breakdown and the work on the floor is the key to this game. Number 20 there, Harry Shield, just stepping in at scrum half. He's come on the field for what looks to be an injury to Diego Walken. I know his uh, family back home in Chile are watching, so Hopefully we get to see him emerge back on the field. Tui Pelotu trying to straighten things up and create some sort of attacking platform. Freeman, lovely step the back row for Sedbo. He's been held up this time though. Big cheers from Wellington. Freeman just getting caught out, too upright in contact. Good brains from Wellington there. Looking at Shield there on the field, that's uh, it's an exciting moment for him. It was his it was his try last year at the at the death that led to Curtis's chance for the touchline conversion. So good memories from him. He'll be hoping for uh, for a chance to have a bit of a repeat of that. Well, as we approach half time, scores still nil all here from Broad Street. It's mainly been. Wellington's half, you'd have to say, on possession territory terms, but it's been ebbing and flowing. And once again, this is just uh, an indictment of the first 30 minutes or so. Sedba back with the ball. Tua Pelotu on a charge. That's too many. Bulldozed his way through there. JJ Coelho with the carry. Change of direction. Here comes Lanny. Looks as if Wellington might have been over that, but good support in the end from Sedba. To Pelotu, the carrier once again. A little break on the fringes from Redpath. He needs some support. Goes left and he finds Mason. Mason's going to be in for the first score of this game on the brink of half time. Oh, Murray Redpath. Absolutely brilliant. That's, he's really changed the dynamic of this game. Quick tap penalty, quick tap free kick, quick break at the ruck, releases Mason. That's just brilliant, brilliant work from Murray Redpath. One, wonderful play. His dad would be proud of that from the nine base. Well, it was smart thinking from the quick free kick. Sedba looked like a different team then, didn't they? They just turned up the tempo to something we've not seen from them in this game. Tupelotu with a couple of carries. Bit of sloppy defence here. Where were Wellington? Caught napping. And you don't expect to see Lawrence Mason supporting as hooker there. Great, great try from Sedba. It's a brilliant supporting line from Mason, but it's 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 all that work of Turpelotto and Redpath. Turpelotto, two carries there where he's just got Sedba, uh, Wellington, sorry, rolling on the back foot and they just can't get back quick enough to cover that fringe and Redpath's alert to it goes around the side, jumps over the bodies to get himself in position. Lovely little bit of play from him, but it, it comes from that dynamic between him taking the quick taps and from Tua Pilotu just smashing over with two huge carries in that period of play. We were talking about it a few minutes ago, Sedba's guards at the breakdown and how influential they've been. Wellington missed a few there. Redpath was through and Mason scores. 
Yeah, and it just shows you the value of, of getting across the game line and getting front foot ball from a from a big carrier. It just it makes it so hard to get those guards in position because you're you're always chasing your own tail to get back around, get back on side, get in tight. And it just caused carnage with that with that one huge carry. I mean there must have been three or four guys hanging off him at the end of that. Wellington try and send it deep, but it's well collected by Tate. The Take him back. Redbath sends this one back though. Chance for Louis Johnson to boot this one downfield. Collected by Melville. Sedba attempting to run right. Here goes Mason once again. Won't have the legs this time. Tries to get the offload away. Goes forward. Picked up by Wellington themselves through Sanger trying to run it deep. Ted Johnson attempts to run over a few brown shirts. The game just starting to come alive at half-time. Penalty to Wellington. Frantic period of play. Oh, this game has just suddenly woken up and blown alive. Brilliant stuff. Both sides looking to go. Lovely little play. Oh, here we go. Bradbury with a quick tap going on his own. Certainly said there weren't 10 then. Wellington, you get a feeling that they appreciate how important it is to get a score before half time definitely and they'll feel like they've had the, the most of this half and they they find themselves seven points down they're, they'll be desperate to get themselves back on an even footing before the break well that pass from Kane to Finn Tours going to ground thank you George and that is the half a frantic end to a cagey opening 35 minutes here from Broad Street. Half-time scores. Sedba lead seven points to nil against Wellington College. And what has been dubbed not only the biggest English schoolboy rugby game of the year, but of the decade. And Sedba, well, they've been on the back foot, Angus, for most of that first half, but managed to one visit into the Wellington 22 and come away with points. Yeah, it will be an interesting sort of half-time debrief for them. They've certainly, they'll, I think they'll be pretty pleased with that in terms of while they haven't had a lot of attacking ball, they've absorbed everything that Wellington have thrown at them. Their work, as we've spoken about throughout the, the first half at the breakdown, has been just outstanding. And then in attack, just that one clinical moment, really sharp play from Redpath, great carrying for Tua Pelosi, good support from Lawrence Mason. And I think... They'll be delighted to have come away with that score. They they probably wouldn't have been expecting to come away with the lead. But Wellington, on the other hand, that's a tough one to go into half time at. They'll feel as though they've had the running of this game. They find themselves seven 0 down. They'll be thinking they haven't done a lot wrong. They just can't seem to get themselves any space out wide, having made those early sort of incisions in tight. They're just being they're being brutalised at the breakdown at the moment. If they can get if they can get the ball away from there and a bit wider, they may find some luck. This was the try from Wellington to Bellotti, who uh, has been so influential at the breakdown, starting this attack, which is finished off by Lawrence Mason. Pretty much out of nothing, quick tap from the free kick on halfway, carry from two of Bellotti, pick and go from Redpath. Look at this, it wasn't even a particularly great pass from Johnson to two of Bellotti, well, yeah, still made meters. The, the move had almost broken down. They'd sort of got crossed wires, overrun it. Tua Pelosi got it almost at a standing start. Didn't really necessarily want it there. But he's just turned the engine on and, and started to rumble forward. And the defenders have fallen off in his wake. And it's just set the platform for Redpath to just pick around that fringe, get himself one-on-one, -on -one, and then just release Mason for the run-in. If you watching that a, a third time there, I think uh, Redpath could have gone on his own in the end and finished it under the sticks. But... Maybe a bit too generous to give it to Mason. Great support from the hooker there. Well, you know, scrum halves, they've, they've got to be generous, haven't they? they, they their job is to keep everyone else around them still still, uh, st still feeling like they're in credit because you, you want those big boys looking after you later on. So better give them the odd try now and then. Well, thank you to our supporters this evening. Guardian Pro Mouthguards giving your teeth every sporting chance. Check them out if you've got any mouthguard needs. And you'd have just seen at the back of the screen there, what looks to be the captain for Sedba, JJ Coadio, part of the Falcons Academy, coming off. Looks like he may have dislocated his shoulder there. 
So a big loss for Sedba going into the second half. Mounted memories. Check them out for your bespoke memorabilia framing. So, although the scoreboard says said but seven points up, all the momentum, all the territory, all the possession really, despite it being quite fractious at times, has gone Wellington's way. What have they got to do in the second half to come out on top? Because they've been punished numerous times with a few errors themselves, but mainly that punishment coming in from Sedba's back row. Yeah, I think actually the solution for them is relatively simple. It's they've got to tidy up the, the breakdown with their own ball, so they've got to make sure that they can get those phases together, whether that's maybe keeping it tight with a, with a bigger pod of people for those early carries so that the, their ball can't get disturbed. If they can get that ball on the front foot, get it, get it secure, get through a few phases, I think they then have to start looking wide. They've managed to, when they do get the ball through the hands, they've shown that they're showing their skills, they, they look threatening and there is space out there because of how tight Sedbro are defending. So it's really a sort of combination of that, get yourself on the front foot through the tight, then you'll get the chance to go wide. And if they can do that, there, there is opportunity for them. Well, if you've ever thought about filming your own rugby game to do some analysis, take a look at the high mate. <laughs> Well, back for the second half then. Wellington, with a bit of work to do, these games over the last 18 years or so have only really been a score or two in it. Wellington not starting as they would have wished to have gone on. Four in front of the kicker there. Needless mistake. So I think Sedbur are going to take the scrum. Just over eager there, aren't they? They're clearly disappointed at going in at half time behind, and they just they want to get up early, get a big early shot in, and cause a bit of disturbance. But too eager, and it's a bit sloppy that really. I think for the neutral angles, we're hoping this really opens up as it was about to at the close of the half, because we want to see tries, we want to see scores, and we want to see the two best school sides in the country going head to head, full full pelt. Well, exactly, and we've we've spoken about how electric both of these backlines are if they can get into the game. But at the moment, it's just it's such hard work for them to do that. The, you know, both sides, they're, they're working tight to be exceptional. Big scrum from Wellington, but said they do well to get it away. Melville out to Melville, number two, fumbled in contact though, and that's gone into touch. Good pace on the ball from Oliver Melville, the vice captain and fullback. But, uh, Brother Cameron couldn't quite get a hold of that one. No, but it's good early ambition, that isn't it? Using that little left to right wheel and just just getting down that touch line. And that's what we want to see a bit more of. See if see if both sides can have a bit more attacking intent. Good pace from Sedba, and a good way to start the half. Pinning Wellington back just outside their 22, a position they didn't really find themselves in very much in the first 35 minutes. Finn Livingston Learmont then. Feeding Thomas. Didn't see too much of him in that first half and been lost forward. Advantage over! 
trying to play it wide. Shield steps, looks for the offload, gets it away into the hands of Melville, but he's bounced into touch. It just never quite got organised in time there on that counter-attack. You could see them all excited at the opportunity, but they just couldn't quite get the bodies in the right places to, to really construct anything too threatening there. Thomas here, ball in one hand. There's been a few of those in the game already. Just the ball bouncing out of hand in contact. Good defence from Louis Johnson though. That's a, that's a 10 making a big hit on a powerful 12. Really good work from him. Don't change! No, out! out. No replacements in the front row from Wellington. Carry coming in from Johnson here. Manages to feed Thomas. Good ball away. Nudge over the top into space. Bounces up into the hands of Cameron Melville. Good tackle coming in from Monty Bradbury. And Wellington have been rewarded with a fine kick chase with the penalty. It's almost too good a clear out. He hit him so hard that he, he's flipped it. I don't actually think it was deliberate. Well, definitely not deliberate or the referee would have would have reached for a higher sanction. He's just, he's cleared him so hard. He, he's knocked him right off his feet and, and upside down. Great opportunity for Wellington though. Good intelligent kick there from Bradbury after getting a bit of front ball in the tight, as we said. It was a superb kick chase, really. Five bodies around the catcher, Cameron Melville. And you just think with this line out, this is a great opportunity here for Wellington. We saw just a few moments ago on the far side of the pitch on their own 22 how good the driving line out was, but that's been tapped over by Sanger. Lost forward. Bit of commentator's curse there, but that is not the mistake you want to make on your opposition's five metre line. Not at all, and that you can see from the body language of both sets of players there, that feels like a really key moment. That was a huge opportunity for Wellington. It's just inches in that. But what Seba there after that, all pumped up, all clapping, all cheering, and Wellington heads down. And they know that was a big opportunity, but both sides will feel the momentum shift from that. Difficult position for a scrum here for Sedba, but they've got it away. The clearance kick, though, doesn't get them too much breathing room. Line out to Wellington. Still inside Sedba's 22. Wellington feel they've got to make use of one of these opportunities soon. They've had a couple in the first half. They've had one just a couple of seconds ago there. They need to get themselves across this with this whitewash at some point. Perhaps Five. even a penalty, just something to get themselves on the board, feel the momentum go a little bit their way. They've had a lot of opportunities and not had anything for it yet. Trying to set up a driving more. Still going forward here. Three brown shirts bring Wellington to ground. Johnson with a carry. He's been dynamic when he's had the ball in this game. Certainly a point of attack for Wellington. Backs to the captain with a carry himself. Bradbury over the top. Add on to the right wing. Looked a bit high on Alex T, but the referee doesn't call anything. Seven away. Still punch a hole in this Sedba defence. Wide pass coming out here. Could this be a try? Step back off the left foot for Finn Tours. Can he go over? Stopped 30 centimetres short. Agonisingly close for Wellington. What a pass that was from Monty Bradbury. Penalty advantage. 11 offside. Wellington have the advantage. Livingston Learman tries to get away. Bradbury round the back, over the top once again. Can they go in over on the far corner? Yes, they can. Well deserved from Wellington. Alex Teague with the score over on the far side of the pitch. Oh, that's much better from Wellington College, isn't it? Wow. I was about to say what an exceptional bit of defence that was from Tom Lanny in the left-hand side after the Bradbury pass, but Wellington keep their composure. 
get through a couple of phases, move it wide, and it's, it's a running fatigue, really. Really good stuff from them. That's exactly what we spoke about. Get the ball, punch in tight, and then look wide. George, can you just confirm if they're making a well, two if, if so, who's on? choicey passes from Bradbury really set this one up. On, so they were punching so hard, Wellington, that they set the said Burt defence in. And in the end, quite a simple score. They just had the extra numbers. It's exactly what they've been good at all season, though. And what we've what we've been sort of imploring them to do through this game is is to to get solid ball on the front foot in the tight. And then look wide, and, and Bradbury, Bradbury's, you know, he's been brave. He's looking wide. He's he's risking the interception for the for the joy of the try, and he's pulled, pulled off two magnificent passes there. It's created brilliant space and, and a run in fatigue. Well, how close was the uh, first attempt? Finn Tours just stepping off his left foot. You thought he was going to carve his way in, but didn't happen that time for Wellington. They did well to recycle the ball. Oh, it was an it was an unbelievable tackle from Lanny. That was that was a try every day of the week, and and somehow Lanny has managed to stop him getting across. Ultimately, he counted for little, but it deserves a mark of respect just for the the sheer tenacity to be able to stop him there. Over on the uh, far corner, one of the Sedba players just receiving a bit of treatment. So Max Thomas is waiting to take. The conversion at the moment. Running repairs all over the field at the moment. It's that sort of game, I think. It's just the tenacity and the collisions at the breakdown, I think, which is causing a few sore bodies. Yeah, and it's, I was just watching some of that, that Wellington build-up, and it, it, a little change they've made from the first half is they're trying as much as possible to get someone latching on as they, uh, as they receive the ball so that you've actually got two players hitting the contact, effectively getting a clear out in before before the tackles even happened almost and it's just allowed them to get that extra bit of front foot ball which is where they've managed to create that space from max thomas first shot at goal for him in this game part of the london irish under 18s hoping to play for italy under 20s clean strike dissects the post Wellington make it all square 43 minutes into this game we've certainly got a game on our hands haven't we Same as the, first half, keep it on side. the atmosphere is building the tension is rising still a lot of life left in this match a game which will perhaps decide he takes the 2019-2020 Daily Mail trophy. And Wellington not resting on their laurels, already trying to spin it wide. Finn Locke intercepted by Freeman. Freeman, since he came on midway through that first half, has kept very busy indeed. Penalty advantage. Two Pelotu. Get the number, please. Skips through one tackle, tries to steamroll his way over another. Finally brought down by Rhodes he looks so dangerous when he's got the ball he, to he a lot a big big problem at, at the moment whenever he gets the ball I, I'd like to see him give that one actually but his, his running game is causing real problems every time no James Naylor not quite sure where he was going there but the referee brings it back for the advantage so no problems for him six black That's tackle off the ball got quite a difference in their back five haven't they they've got Tupelotu and the quick footed flanker of Freeman which uh, gives them a point of difference really in their side bulldozer versus hot stepper in the back row yeah it's a, it's a real contrast isn't it we, we've got to see both in action there I think it'll be, be interesting to see if they can if they can maybe use Freeman slightly wider and get get him a bit of space he looks like he's got the gas it's it's tempting to to want to put uh to a blotto in that space but but actually if you can if you can get him in a bit tighter soak people in as he did for that first try it just causes carnage for the opposition and you're guaranteed to have space elsewhere well Sedbrook come back for the penalty and have opted to go for the post 42 meters out then this is schoolboy level as well. You'd think we were on the high belt. It's a big pitch out here at Broad Street. 
chance to regain the lead for Sedba. Well, it certainly had the legs and he's got the accuracy as well. What a kick that is. You know, we've got to remember that this is a this is a 17-year-old kid kicking it from 42 metres out. He could probably take that back to the halfway line the way that's cleared it. That's a wonderful kick. He puts his side in the lead. Big 50-metre nudge from Louis Johnson. This game really starting to motor. You can see on the far side of the pitch the uh, younger players from both schools there cheering their way through this game Seven option. Wellington once again option. with a wonky restart you just, they can't afford to have the, these we'll errors in, in this game I think it's going to be that tight it feels as though this is a game that's going to be decided once again by a score or less probably that errors around that area you know, they're unavoidable in a way but they've got to try and cut them out that's twice in the last 12 minutes where they've probably given away, what, 60 metres of territory? That is massive in a game like this. Stay five. Stay five. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, it, you don't want to be tough, tough on guys for just, just an error, but it's, it's such a close game that, that every little bit counts. I mean, get a feeling in an ordinary contest, those sort of things wouldn't matter, but on a day like today, it's a big deal. Louis Johnson with a lovely flat pass. To Lanny. Lanny gets the offload over the top into the hands of Shield. Finds Naylor. Naylor, the scrum half, and the good supporting line. Finds his way into the Wellington 22. Freeman makes five metres himself. To Pelotti. Finley locked as well to get him low. Finally brings him down. Freeman once again, you get a feeling he's probably played on the wing a few times in his career. He's holding his head. His feet are electric, the aren't they? He, he looked as though he was getting set up to get absolutely smashed there and just a bit of a hitch kick and he's back inside and making ground. No, and he's just holding so, his head. An ankle breaker step, isn't it, really? In the defence. You, you wouldn't like to be on the on the receiving end of that, especially in the fringes. You don't you don't really expect that when you're defending that tight. Uh, Again, just uh, yeah. another bit of treatment this time for Wellington on the field. Arvin Sanger just uh, getting the magic sponge. Yeah, started in the 2017 Under-15 Schools Cup winning side. This stream today supported by Mountain Memories for your bespoke memorabilia framing. Check them out. Well, it's a close game. Close games. It's tight between everyone. So if you're thinking about your own protection on the field, check out Guardian Pro Math Games. Giving your teeth every sporting chance. It's a big period of the game coming up now, actually. You've got Seba feel like they're on the front foot. It feels like there's a bit of momentum with them. I think Wellington got that try, but I, th I think they, they still need to make sure that they keep that phase work up. What worked for them for that try is what they need to keep doing. If they can keep doing that, they'll find space, make a bit of ground, and that, that'll get Seba on the back foot again. Wellington really putting the pressure on at the scrum, but... They managed to get the ball away. Here comes the right wing in Fraser Jones. Jones scores. What a line from the set for number 14. Sensational work. That is just beautiful, beautiful simplicity. Just set up off the try, off the scrum. Nice, simple move bringing Jones around on just the biggest hole created by all of those brilliant running lines. That's just, just gorgeously simple. Well, they've been you, under pressure at the scrum set, but they did really well to get it away. Louis Johnson goes nice and flat. Max Thomas gets brushed off. And what a lovely outside arc that is. 
it's a wonderful line because he comes from absolutely nowhere. There, there are two or three passing options, and that's not including him. And he just bends his run around the back of that second option. There's, there's little actually they can do about that in defence. They're, they're all marking men, and he's just spotted the gap and just arced around it beautifully for, from the from the blind side. Said, but beginning to show their true colours and why they've gone unbeaten all season and for the previous two. Louis Johnson's just pulled that one wide. Huge moment that day. That, that, that sort of try, it feels like a killer because it's off a set piece and you always feel like you can, you can defend your set piece, but the amount of running lines going on there and the amount of decoy runners that were, well, decoy runners is an unfair term. They were all genuine options. And they've just picked the right one and he, he's just breezed through. That, it's a lovely try and it's, it's a real heartbreaker if you're Wellington. So difficult for, for Max Thomas at inside centre because he had to have his eyes on two or three attackers and who do you choose? Yeah, and he's got the big man Lanny coming coming down his channel. He, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put any criticism on him on him there. He he's he had to fix on Lanny. It's it's the beauty of that try. It, it's the only option he has. Is he has to sit on Lanny because Lanny was a genuine ball carrying option. It creates it creates space outside him, and they they've they've managed to sweep aside from the from the blind side to create the extra number. It's just very very good play, very well thought, very clinical. It was a better restart from Wellington. Sanger just getting brushed out of the way in the air. The referees said he's knocked it on. So Sedba once again, the momentum swinging their way. You can just feel it, can't you? That that restart went a bit awry before. They then get the try. You can hear the crowd starting to get louder and louder now. They mess up the line out. It's just starting to build, you can feel it. What great work in the air from Reese Tate there because the ball was practically in the hands of Sanger. He got one arm between, nudged it out of the way, and they've got the scrub. Yeah, and he's been he's been quietly impressive all game. It's you know, we've spoken about the rest of the back row quite a lot because they work on the floor, but actually Tate's done a lot of hard work carrying. He's got the ball through his hands a couple of times, he's he's got his hand in there as well. He's having a, a quietly a very tidy game. You can see why he's been picked up by the Newcastle Falcons who are part of the Scotland Under 18 setup as well, Royce Tate. Industrious work so far in this game. Into the final 20 minutes, but the scoreboard is still agonisingly close. Wellington, if they can just keep hold of the ball, go through the phases, they're only one score away from putting the pressure back on Sedgwick. Thank you. Yeah, if there's one thing I've learned about this this fixture is that you absolutely do not count your chickens before they've hatched. They, this, there's always another twist somewhere. Said by trying to play from deep. Some good decoy runners in the midfield, but the pass has gone wayward. Finn Tours coming in with the tackle. Taylor at scrum half now for Sedba, just marshalling his forwards, having a word with the referee. Four timing. Sees this one up for oh, the box kick. Great chase from Sedba, really put the pressure on, collected by Harry Shield, a loose ball. Freeman, the flanker, stands in at scrum half. Louis Johnson steps, juggles it, sends the pass out. Gets it back again. Sees the space over the top. And I think that's gone out on the full. Great option, though. Out on the full, but I'll tell you what, that, again, just goes back to what we were speaking about. The box kick there, retrieving the ball, getting the bounce backwards, getting on the front foot. Louis Johnson, the juggle working for it, just feels as though... There's a, there's a load of momentum building for Sebra and Wellington will be hoping that that kick out on the full okay? just, just stems that tide and perhaps is the moment that just shifts things back their way. Sebra had got numbers over as well. If uh, Johnson had managed to get a looping pass Thank over you. the top, that was a two on one. So the chances are there for them. And they're starting to carve up in this game. Yeah, it was interesting. He, 
I think he saw the space and, and felt as though they, they were having such good momentum, best get the ball there. there the a bit unlucky that it, it's, it's gone just a dash too far, but they certainly had a couple of options available, didn't they? Better line out this time, well, picked out in the air from Finley Lock. Crash coming in through Marcus Rhodes. We're just having a word. He said they're not rolling away. Being a bit lazy at the breakdown, trying to slow down Wellington's ball. Bradbury sends the pass out wide. Elrington gets his hands on the ball once again. Not had much possession in this second half. Here comes Ben Murray. Then backs to the captain. 21 away. Trying to lead his boys. Second man. Gets a penalty from it. Hands in the rock. Oh, that was 21. Second man. Tight decision there. It's a great carry from Baxter who came on a really hard line there okay. down that sort of 10, 12 channel. Thought that Freeman had maybe got his hands on the ball, but perhaps the man inside him didn't quite make out who it was, was, uh, was interfering as well and hadn't quite got on his feet. Well, in the clock, uh, Crucial decision though from Wellington's point of view. This is, a, this is a chance to, as we were saying, end that momentum, get themselves back on the scoreboard again, start to close that gap. Well, I said but certainly attempting to slow that one down there. And Max Thomas will have a chance to go for the sticks. Referee has just confirmed around 15 minutes left on the clock. So Wellington trying to close down the gap on the scoreboard. We Big kick this from Thomas. I think this is probably right on the limit of his range. Saw uh, Louis Johnson get one from a little bit further out. What can Thomas do here? Right on the limit of his range. Cleared it by an inch. Perfect. Well, that was agonisingly close for Max Thomas. I'm sure his uh, heart skipped a beat for a second there. But Wellington yeah, trailed by five points. It's 15-10 to Sedba. Less than 15 minutes to play here in the Daily Mail hand. Trophy. Live on Cheers, mate, from Broad Street Rugby Club here in Coventry. It's a crucial, crucial penalty that sets up. Converted try would win it for Wellington. Well, the game keeps swinging. It was Wellington with these errors at the start of the first half. Sedba's turn, though, to kick it straight out. It's a momentum straight back to Wellington, and that's so important when you just scored to get the ball back in a really good attacking position on halfway. Yeah, and as we said earlier, these, these sort of small errors in an ordinary game, in this game, they feel like they could be could be crucial moments because it's just it's that tight. You know, we're into a one-score game now. They've just got to they've got to keep things. Well, I was going to say they've got to keep things so simple, but that's that's not really the way school where rugby's played now. It's be ambitious, go for it. You know, better to better to win it with something brilliant and risk losing rather than rather than win boring. But I'm sure there'll be a few parents listening to this feed that'll be that'll be wishing they'd all just keep it nice and tight and get the job done, whichever side you're supporting. Well, there's a bit of confusion here between the referee and. Wellington physio because just checking boys there is no HIA at this level so we will check now or he would not re-enter so they are just checking he Wellington wanted to bring Arvin Sanger off for a HIA the referees confirmed there's no HIA at this level so if he left the field that would have been it but uh just allowing yeah, an on pitch inspection for Arvin Sanger the player himself I don't think feels he has any issues but uh they will be bringing on Robbie Offord if everything's okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'd rather you checked in there. Bit of a momentum uh, killer for Wellington, you're going to feel. Time's on. Yeah, they, they were boys, probably more, were not really a great time for a break for them. They were they 13. were just really on the front foot there. It's given Sebra a bit of a chance to regroup. But it's Wellington put into this scrum. We know their scrum's been good all game. Get themselves quickly back on the front foot, and I'm sure they'll be looking to, to spread this ball and, and have a real dart at the Sebra back line. Crow! 
Scrum on the halfway for Wellington then. Putting out the scrum for Finn Livingston Learman. Great set piece. Monty Bradbury with the uh, low hack through. A bit difficult to collect for Fraser Jones, the try scorer. He's seen his pace for his score earlier on. Doesn't manage to get through the kick chase though. Said they're pinned back in their own 22. Naylor will have to try and clear this one. Well, it's gone significantly higher than it has gone long. So Wellington will have a line out just outside the set for 22. A great position, a really lovely tactical kick as well from Bradbury. Yeah, it was a great bit of work from Bradbury. And isn't it amazing how games like these, you can just feel those momentum shifts and it just starts to creep in in so many different areas. We, we were speaking all the five minutes ago of how the momentum was completely with Sedbra and it's just switched the other way entirely. You get a feeling that they've just gone within themselves now. You know, that kick out on the full, really sucker punch for them. The driving ball gone to ground. Wellington had to work hard there to get the ball to the back of the ruck. The crucial thing here for both sides is patience. Wellington needs to be patient going forward like they were for that first try, but Sedba needs to be patient in defence so they get a chance. Well, Bradbury tries to go for the crossfield kick. Shield, it bounces, he manages to collect it right at the death. Under some real pressure. I'm sure he's grateful to Cameron Melville for the support there because that was crunch time for Sedba. He said that Wellington needed to be patient. Perhaps a little bit too risky from Bradbury, the fly half. It was, a, it, was a, it was an interesting option. I think the, the chance was on, just probably pushed it maybe a yard or two too far. If it, if it dropped a bit shorter, it was almost straight in the arms and it was a, a, full, a full flight winger against a, against a stationary defender, but just maybe a yard or two too long. But that's that ambition we were talking about earlier that probably People at home are sitting there screaming, keep, keep it tight, keep it tight. But that's just not the way that, that schoolboy rugby has played anymore. It's be ambitious, go for that daring option. And if you're going to lose this game, you prefer to have given it everything, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. You know, and they're the bits you remember is when you pull something like that off. No, no one remembers the sort of tackle they made from three feet from the breakdown, do they? They certainly don't. It's uh, Finn Baxter and Finley Lock try and get the backs some space out wide Wellington have the penalty advantage they have numbers if Thomas can send it wide Rhodes the number eight with a chip they had the advantage so they're going to bring it back inside the 22 you've got to love that from Rhodes last week we had Finn Baxter taking a cheeky 22 to himself now Rhodes going over the top that's exactly what we're saying about Ambition is just what it's all about. Have a go, why not? You've got advantage. Well, Tom Lanny from Sedbert penalised for a high tackle. Monty Bradbury puts that right on the money. So Wellington with the line out. Lucas Brook, son of Zinzan Brook. The famous All Black with the line out ball. They've gone to the back, and it's Sanger that takes it. Tap down with Rhodes, losing it in contact. So Sedba, once again, their tenacity at the breakdown coming to the fore. Tuapalotu trying to run this one out of trouble. We said they needed to be patient. Momentum shifts once more. Freeman for Sedba now. What a first option that is to have as well, to get, get yourself off your own try line. Just give it to Turpolo and say, oh, on you go, son, have a run. Naylor's box doesn't find touch. It's well collected, though, by Cassius Cleves. 
Ted Johnson. Shows the dummy and goes on his own. Bradbury loves a wide pass, sends it out into the hands of Offord. Finn Tours, rather, this time. Well, that looked agonisingly high from John Bailey. No, no, no. And it looks as if Marcus Rhodes is taking a bit of a clattering here into the face. See the cheers there from Tua Pelotti, though. He is pumped up for this. They, they are all very, very pumped up for this. And no wonder, you know, for both sides, this is the this is the biggest game of the season. This is this is everything really, and the the tension is at absolute maximum pressure at the moment. Well, this was the uh, pass to Rhodes, and that was the collision. That's high, and you've seen those go for red cards. Yeah, it's a tough one. That it's. It's just trying to hit him hard and hit him backwards, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a timing right, it's issue, but uh, by the looks the of things, the ref, the ref thought it was all right. It's Dif difficult to tell. We didn't have the perfect angle, but... Well, the referee just calling to the chest there was the contact, and just goes to show how and difficult rugby collisions can be, so you've got to be protected. So check out Guardian Frame Mouth no, Guards, giving your teeth every sporting chance if you want to stay protected in big head-on collisions. But certainly the sort of clash that could knock your teeth out, wasn't it? It was a, uh, it was no, a huge hit. Frame that one. You could frame that one. If you're thinking about framing any of your bespoke memorabilia, then check out Mountain Memories, supporters of today's live stream here. Well, we're into the final 10 minutes of this game, the biggest game of the year arguably in schoolboy rugby. The final score last year, Sedbert won 17 points to 15. It could swing the other way if Wellington make the most of their territory here. It's a scrum to Sedbert, and James Naylor will have the put in at the scrum. We've seen how strong Wellington are though in the set piece. Certainly feels a little bit written, doesn't it, that we're gonna get something similar again. No one really managing to separate themselves too far on the scoreboard. And look at that from Wellington, really putting the pressure on Naylor as well to get it away. Sent long, sent very long, and the ball is still in play for now. Finally rolled into touch. And that is a huge, huge kick to relieve pressure from Louis Johnson. That is absolutely magnificent from Louis Johnson. That is exactly what his team needed. Just get down the other end of the field, get it as far as possible, and he has done it to perfection. Brilliant play. That's a kick in excess of 70 metres, and at this level from such a young man is extraordinary, really. Oh, he's, he's, he's dug himself his side out of it, of a, of a big old period of pressure there. It's just a wonderful bit of play. Exactly what was asked. And this game swings Sedba's way once more. Lucas Brook. Finds his mark at the line-out, around the back from Monty Bradbury. Lovely from Wellington to work the ball into the 15-metre channel from one side of the pitch to the other in the blink of an eye. Johnson with the carry. It's on wide if they want. Bradbury takes it flat, out to Thomas, Ooh, Finley look, Locke looked a little bit too flat there, but the referee says the ball went backwards. Arvin Sanger being chased down by Freeman. Bradbury does that really well to get out of contact there. And Sedba once again has stolen it. A trademark turnover from the boys in brown. Both sides throwing absolutely everything at this. Yeah, you can you can feel that, can't you? You can you can see the energy they're expending. Sebra flying across the field to cover that space, and then once again snaffling the ball on the deck. This is just everyone giving maximum effort. Could rush defence. 
from Rhodes in the midfield for Wellington. A little bit of a snipe from James Naylor, and James Naylor might have found a hole here. Turns on the afterburners, goes around the outside, and James Naylor is going to win this game for Sedba. Oh, James Naylor. How about that? We thought Murray Redpath's snipe earlier was amazing. James Naylor has just gone, I'll raise you on a bet. 60, 70 yards was that deep inside his own half, flying through. And then when he looked for an option and there wasn't one coming, he's just he's just gone on the outside himself. Absolutely astonishing stuff. Well, Murray Redpath, the starting scrum half, set the standard in the opening 35 minutes. Once again, Wellington caught short at the breakdown. This moment here where he had the ball in two hands, just drew the defender somewhat. Turned on the afterburners, what a fend as well. He's looked lively since he's come on the field. But that is a score that James Naylor will remember for a long, long time. Oh, it's just brilliant. He gets the ball there and he's one-on-one one on one in the end and I'm thinking, chip it, chip it, chip it. <laughs> yeah, that's your option. Of course, I, I, don't, I wouldn't have the pace to know that you can go around the outside there. Just brilliant from him. That was extraordinary. And matches as close as this are often won with extraordinary moments. And today, there's been two for Sedbert. But the moment of the match will most likely go to James Naylor. Johnson pulls the conversion wide once more. And that is a score from James Naylor that just goes to show why well, he's on the books of Newcastle Falcons. If that does prove to be the score that wins the game, you just couldn't find anything more fitting. But you know what? Such is the nature of Wellington College. They'll be sitting there going, we've got four or five minutes left. It's two scores. This is doable. They will believe right up until the point where it's mathematically impossible for them to, to win this game. Wellington went into the final 10 minutes. They had the momentum. They had a five metre line out. Time's on. They got it and it was a great set piece from the line out. But in the end, just came unstuck from a great bit of breakdown work from Sedbert. And that is what's been really defining this game. Yeah, that's been the difference between the two sides, really. It's been Sedbert's breakdown work it has been absolutely exceptional. Exceptional, sorry. And and then realistically, it's it's two great bits of sniping from, from the pair of scrum halves. And, and that's been the difference so far. Naylor with the box. And it's bounced off the shoulder of Monty Bradbury. And that, you get a sense, is just how it's gone for Wellington today. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough moment that it, you can just sense a bit from the body language of a few of the players that they're they felt as though that was just a moment where things are starting to slip away. But as we said before, they've got to keep believing. There'll be people in that team, the likes of Finn Baxter, that will keep believing because as we've seen in this fixture, all you need is 30 seconds. Well, questionably straight, but Sedbert get it away. Louis Johnson kicks it into the corner, well chased from Cameron Melville, who really put the pressure on Alex Teague there, the try scorer in this second half for Wellington. Sedbert, a pick and go from Bailey, the vice captain. Out into the corner now through Tom Lanny. Lanny looked as if he might have just bundled his way over there, but Wellington doing well to hold it up short. Naylor marshalling things well from the breakdown. We've seen his footwork. This is his game management skills now. Josh Johnson with a carry in close quarters. Mason. Lanny, the outside centre stepping in. Johnson looks to go on his own. Tries to find some support, but nobody close enough to get the offload away. They've got numbers over. If Sedbert can get the offload out, they just couldn't. It was lost in contact. And some really, really smart stuff from Sedbert. And you just get a feeling now that Wellington really know this game is well and truly lost. 
Yeah, I think we're e even without Seba scoring there. I think you look at where we are on the field. We've got maybe a minute or so left to play. That's that's probably that. Looked for a while there as they said we were going to get another try just through the sheer pressure that they were starting to build there. But either way, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult even for a side like Wellington College to dig themselves out of this at this point. Hold nine. Good scrum once again from Wellington though. They've had a lot of success in that area of the game today. Great break coming from Elrington, the fullback. He's not had too many chances. Rather, that was Harry Kane, the vice captain from 13 for Wellington. Huge hit coming in from Carmichael. Part of the Hong Kong under 18 side this year. Tours now. Steps back inside, trying to find some space. Wellington not giving up just yet. Great break and offload from Ted Johnson. Finds Nicholas Teague. Wellington still trying to find something in this game, even at these latter stages. Pass goes wayward, but eventually picked up by Alex Teague on the right wing. Bradbury picks out his inside centre, Thomas. Dink over the top into a little bit of space. As a nailer clears things up. And all credit really to Wellington for trying something, but uh, the referee calls time. And that is the final play of the game here from Broad Street in Coventry. The biggest game on the English schoolboy rugby calendar has once again gone to Sedba. Wellington, a valiant effort from them, but the final score, Sedba 20, Wellington College 10. And the boys in Brown make it five from five. And a great game, Angus, from Sedba. Oh, a brilliant performance from them. And just look how much it means to them at, the, at that final whistle there. They're almost in tears, some of the boys that down on the floor. Just a fantastic performance. It was ruthlessly clinical. They didn't have a lot of opportunities to, to get themselves across the whitewash. But when they did, it was just so incisive. Brilliant play from the two scrum halves as well to, to create those opportunities. But really, the tale of the game was about their ability to soak up that Wellington pressure and just get themselves those key turnovers, crucial moments in the game. Well, you see there, Simon Mulholland, the Sedba director of rugby, just shaking hands with Dan Richards, his counterpart from Wellington. How delighted he must be to make it five from five. They've not lost this fixture since 2013. And in the end, Angus, it was that first half, the only score of the first half, right on the cusp of half time from Lawrence Mason that really just about won them this game. Yeah, it felt like a big moment at the time, didn't it? Because Wellington really had had all the running in that first half, all the all the field position. But Sedba getting that try through some lovely work there from Tua Pelota and then look at that break from, from Murray Redpath. And you're right, he was very generous there. He could have gone himself, but Mason will be very happy and he'll be, uh, he'll be looking after him after him afterwards. It was a fine score and it was out of nothing really from Sedba in the first half because they hadn't had much ball, barely any territory and they made the most of their one opportunity really. You can see the dejected looks on uh, the Wellington boys' faces. And before we look at the uh, rest of the highlights, well, here's the uh, try from Wellington which brought things back level. Alex T crossing over on the far side of the pitch. Good period of possession. They started the half pretty well, didn't they, Wellington? Yeah, they did. And it was, you know, it was a, it was a good bit of ambitious play to get that try. And I think it's important for Wellington College to, to remember that they actually played pretty well here. They just, you know, they faced up against a, a team that is truly outstanding. And Wellington still have an opportunity to create a fair bit of, of, of history here this season. St. Joseph's Festival, they've already got wrapped up. They've got a Champions Trophy final next week. They can still win this Daily Mail Trophy as well. All this win for Sedbra has done is make sure they stay in the hunt. 
there are still three teams six with possibilities but three teams realistically that could win this and Wellington's still one of them so they've got to get their heads up because they're in with a chance of some real history this season as well well let's take a look at the second try from said but I mean, this was a fantastic score straight off the set piece Fraser Jones the right wing coming in from nowhere really yeah look at that he just goes in from absolutely nowhere it's it's so tough to defend that because there's so many options to defend elsewhere and he's he, with his gas as well there's nothing you can do it was great work this uh, another angle of it and even from this wide angle you can't see Fraser Jones until the very last minute he holds his line beautifully nothing the centers could do he cuts straight through the middle of them darts around Teague fine score we thought that one was good though but what about the final score from James Naylor Let's, we'll take a look at it now Similar to the opening score of the game, really, but from you know, 70 metres out. Yeah, sort of carbon copy of, of spotting the gap and going for it. But just, just the sheer distance makes it absolutely incredible. And then the pace to round off at the end is, is just brilliant. It was, he, he almost looked lost for a second, looking for options, looking for options, and sort of option of last resort was, well, I best I get to go for the try myself then. Yeah, he looked at Johnson on the inside saw there was only one man to beat in front of him so thought well why not and that is as fine a score you'll see as any this season individual brilliance from James Naylor and said but well the hunt for their treble treble is still on they're still in this Daily Mail trophy they've got the uh, Roslyn Park sevens and their own tens tournament to come later on in the season how do you rate their ch chances well, if they if they get the win against uh, against Millfield on, uh, on Wednesday next week, that should, uh, by my math, seal seal this first one for them. That would be a tough game. Millfield are in really good form at the moment, but uh, you, you'd have said for his favourites, such has been their brilliance. Their chances everywhere else, their chances are always good, no matter what tournament they turn up to. Uh, Rosson Park is a, is an unpredictable tournament. There are so many good teams there. It's uh, dependent in in many in many. Uh, aspects according to who's who's available with your academies and all the rest of it but they've got every chance there and seven tens they love that well angus final word from you then difficult to choose but uh your man of the match from this game could we put it on any one person there's some great performances across the board from both c teams but your man of the match for this game there are some great performances i think both scrum halves were excellent the, the entire said back row were, was fantastic and you know, shout out as well to a lot of the the wellington forwards in particular but i think the the hard carrying from carwin to a was just it was just brutal and it got them out of trouble so many times and it helped create the platform for that first try that really made the difference in the entire game well what a fantastic occasion here angus Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, a plug for 15 Rugby. Where can people go if they want to find out more about schoolboy rugby in England? Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. Yeah, www.15rugby.com and on Twitter and Instagram, we're at 15rugbyxv. It's the only place to go for schoolboy rugby. So the final scores from Broad Street in Coventry, then a fantastic game as part of the Daily Mail trophy. Said but the winners, 20 points to 10 against Wellington College. Until next time, good night. Side. England have won this one 22 points to six. There's a little bit of an arm wrestle at the start, but England ran away with it in the end.
Bollocks. Winners of 2018. Well boys, let's give it up. Go on, lad. to the glorious sunshine of the LDN7s where we have got wall-to-wall -wall rugby and one hell of a party coming at you all weekend. Mate, the whole vibe here has changed from last year, so it's got more of a massive festival theme now as well. Bigger, better. And, uh, and rugby's really good as well. <laughs> so burgers, beers, good vibes, plenty of top rugby, so get yourself down here to the LDN 7s 2019. <laughs> What more could you want? Like Heinz rugby winning. And just taking the people to the cleaners. I love it. Yeah. 